Frank, congratulations. When did it turn for you with this team going from a group that could do it all to a team that you thought like, hey, we got all the pieces, let's, let's do this thing? That's a tough question. You know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, we came out of the gate so strong um, back in November, whatever, October, November, whenever this, this year began. Uh, you know, obviously on paper, we felt like we had a team that could compete for the championship. <clears throat> um, when we get, came out of the gate strong, we lost the first game. I think we went 17 and one after that. Started thinking about, you know, we could do something special. Uh, I think the weekend um, where we beat Milwaukee and the Clippers was huge for our internal confidence, you know, that we could and were going to uh, reach our goal. And um, you know, I say probably those those two moments, the way we came out of the gate and that that weekend before. I had a hit. Go ahead, Dan. Frank, you told me you didn't get a lot of sleep after game three, I think it was. Um, what was it? What was it after game five? And, and I guess. Uh, Misery. <laughs> I'll feel all worth it now. Yeah, losing a game in the NBA Finals is one of the worst experiences of my life. <laughs> but, you know, our group, I think, collectively felt that way. And. You know, the challenge was to channel that into effort and focus and energy and enthusiasm, positive energy, into the next game. And, you know, I put a challenge on our group to, uh, to be a team that's going to respond to losses all throughout the season, try to never lose two games in a row. And, you know, that, that applied to, uh, to all of these playoff series. You know, we wanted to channel that whatever you want to call it, the misery of losing the game into the next game. And uh, boy, did we ever tonight. I'll go. <clears throat> Frank, um, you know, obviously this roster had talent, but in a game like this where you see guys sort of take your direction, you, you know, you came in famous for your defensive tendencies, to, for guys to take your direction at that talent level and put it to effect, is this why you decided to coach this team and come to the Lakers, even though at the time, at the time there was a lot of uncertainty around the franchise. Well, there's not uncertainty in my mind with LeBron James. And, um, you know, I took the job, but we didn't have Anthony Davis. We didn't have really our whole team. You know, uh, it was a different team uh, after the fact, but I, I have always believed in LeBron James, you know? He's the greatest, he's the greatest player the basketball universe has ever seen. And if you think you know, you don't know. Okay? Until you're around him every day, <clears throat> you're coaching him, you're seeing his mind, you're seeing his adjustments, seeing the way he leads the group. If you think you know, you don't know. And it's just been a, a remarkable experience coaching him and um, you know, seeing him take this group that was not in the playoffs last year, the roster was put together, you know, overnight and just taking a group and leading us uh, to the promised land, so they say. Um, he was terrific just the entire season leading us, and you know, I can't say enough about him. Jeff Zolkin. Frank, everyone talked about what a mental challenge it was going to be to win in the bubble. When did you start to recognize, you know, what kind of mental strength your team had? And did you think once you got to the bubble, you had the team that was mentally strong enough to handle everything that came with it? Yeah, I've always believed in our, our, our mental toughness and our experience. You know, um, you know not just uh, LeBron. You know, I, I believe Anthony Davis was destined to be a champion. And, you know, the, the, the pairing of the two of them together uh, you know, took us here, but the experience of the group, the IQ of the group, you know, Rondo, Danny Green, Bell McGee haven't been there, uh, the talent level of the other guys, other guys willing to buy into their, to starring in their roles. Um, you know, I just, uh, we've had a strong belief in this group. So, you know, when we got into the bubble, it was about focusing on the work and staying in the moment, focusing on day to day. And, um, you know, if there was one point, I don't know if there was there was really one point. I think beating Portland was a huge confidence booster for us because they were playing as well as anybody in the world. And we know what Dame Lillard 
is capable of. And, um, and it just built, built you know, each series from that point on. Any other questions here before we toss it back to Will? <coughs> Go ahead, Will. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tanya? Frank, you said twice, if you think you know, you don't know until you see it every day, what LeBron James actually is. Um, can you think of some moments where th that c uh, come to mind of, that, just, that sort of describe that feeling and showed you that you didn't know until you were around him? You know, some individual moments, you know, that's, that's tough to say. I mean, it, it, it literally happened every day. Every day we're in film and we're talking about our team. Every day I talk to him uh, before practice or before a game. This is what I'm feeling about the team. You know, this is a direction I think we can go. I think we can, um, you know, move the needle uh, some in this direction. And, you know, decisiveness is, a, is, is an incredible quality to have. And, you know, to have his mind and, and you know, be able to uh, use him as a resource to partner with him, uh, how, things I'm seeing on tape, uh, believing in, um, you know, with his his mind uh, to collaborate with the decisions on how to how to move forward with our, with our group. It's just uh, I don't know if there's one or one or two instances that you can point to, but just every every damn day in film, you know, he's leading the charge with getting our team better. And um, you know, I don't think I don't think people can uh, undervalue that. Brett? Frank, when, when you came in, you said the identity was going to be defense. How good or even great was your defense through the first three quarters? Uh, I'm so proud of that. Our, our guys, you know, look, you can have a defensive, you can have a talented team, even a defensive talented team. I mean, if everybody's not working together and everybody's, everybody's not bought in and seeing the value of being able to suffocate an opponent and take away their strength, um, you're not going to reach that level. But our guys saw the value very early on. And, um, you know, they bought in. And you know, the first three quarters, I'm just super proud of our guys because we were, we were all over the place. We executed our coverages perfectly. And we did it with energy and with passion and with active hands. And we rebounded the basketball. And that, that just controlled the whole game because with our, our ability on the break, if we're getting stops without fouling, other teams had no chance with us, uh, you know, getting out on the break. So, uh, just very, very proud of our defensive performance tonight. Frank, I'm going to take two more. Uh, Bill Long. Hey, Frank. Congratulations. Uh, you talked about this roster and, and how it was put together essentially overnight, um, and obviously you brought in new guys over the course of, of, of the season. Uh, this is a roster that had to be really versatile for you guys to do what you did the way you did it. Whether it was Markeith, you know, Dwight, um, you know, Alex tonight. Kaylin won you a quarter in the second round. When you reflect on this group and, and why all the pieces worked and, and how, um, and maybe how, what people missed about how this roster was built early on, what made it the right supporting cast? Well, I think, I think the buy-in, I think, you know, everybody understanding that uh, we have an extremely deep team, um, you know, and whatever was asked of them, uh, was going to be was going to be filled out. You know, the guys were just ready, ready and willing and encouraged to star in their roles, whatever that role ended up being. Um, but the way we we wanted to have big guys, you know, that could bang with uh, you know some of the bigger centers in the league and the ability to slide AD over to the five. You know, the hybrid approach of you know being able to play small, being able to play big. Um, you know, but the, you know, just just all of those things factored into it, and, and the and the ability to to have multiple guys that could defend, and dribble, pass, and shoot on the offensive end. You know, it just great gave us great versatility.